Good morning, folks. We've got a number of articles today, including one that dances through the climate, solar super flares, and Earth's magnetic excursion cycle. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the bright areas on the north. They are starting to develop small sunspots beneath the arching fields, even had a small C-class flare out of the central group. But as we wait for bigger flares to return, things are mostly quiet. The solar wind intensification didn't last very long, and we never got geomagnetic instability from it. We will be watching the equatorial region as it turns in to see if that low coronal density, which is making it look slightly darker near the equator, will reveal any equatorial coronal holes as it turns, like we see at the polar region. Progress in solar storm analysis and modeling. We've got studies increasing awareness, but in large part, awareness of how vulnerable our electrical systems are. Study in the UK and a thesis on the New Zealand systems. Due to their high latitude, the geochemistry, the nearby magnetic south pole, the telluric conductivity, and the setup of the grid itself, those all make New Zealand very high solar storm risk, so it's great to see the focus there. Interesting one from Quaternary International up next, working towards the planetary forcing on the sun. They're only using gravity as usual, but the top remark here is a confirmation of the millennial cycles on the sun, which lead up to the 6,000 and 12,000 year cycles as a harmonic system. Up next, folks, they are spreading this map around the internet. It is the whitewashed one they spread around every month. Their categories are not scientific and allow them a lot of leeway, especially in that white, quote, near average color. Here's what happens when you focus on the last 30 years and use actual numbers. Utterly necessary to notice the peak of temperatures and are beginning to crest. I'm going to do some zoom shots here so you can see how their subtle difference paints a much different picture. In the first image of each set is the white washes, and in some cases, the red washed aspects. Some areas red on the first map are actually blue on the second one. This is because the first map uses a longer timeline back to the cherry pick cold snap 150 years ago so that everything looks warm. Same as every other month they release this data. Oof, this hurts. As if getting the science wrong isn't bad enough. As if lying and propagandizing the science politically isn't bad enough. Now they want our money to fix the problem. And trust me, what's coming after that is they lock down the world over it. Can you imagine when they do something so horrifying over a lie? Wait a minute. Moving on to my Michael Moore hat. He would have loved to put this in his documentary, Debunking Alternative Energies. Remember when he flipped and turned on the mainstream climate world? That blue hydrogen? Think again. Remember those stories about climate change causing food strife in Africa? Think again. Arctic greening? Still going. Expected to continue marching onward and most favoring the deciduous species. That's fast growing, carbon storing, soil enhancing, fruit producing delights. Oh, you naughty global warming. And last hit on the climate front, watch them sweep this under the rug pretty quickly. Past land rise and sink accounts for much more of the apparent sea level change in the past than they imagined. This not only reinforces the idea that many high sea level rise areas today are actually from post-glacial rebound, and that the forecast of sea level rise in the future, which is partly based on the past, is again largely overblown and fear-mongering. Now last but not least, a whole bunch of great science here. They found two solar proton storm signatures leading up to the last 6,000 year half cycle event. We have just been calling it the NOAA flood event because everyone knows what that means. These solar storm signatures show up stronger in the record than any other, but did these scientists presume them to be the biggest on record? No, because they know to correct for Earth's geomagnetic field. And when you do that, you have to account for the dip in field strength we had during that NOAA event. It underwent excursion about 12,000 years ago, came back up, had its mini half-cycle event 6,000 years ago, during which the solar proton events in this paper occurred, and came back up to peak about 3,000 years ago, and of course we're on our way back to full excursion now. We greatly appreciate your support. To learn more about these cycles, watch our 12,000-year disaster cycle playlist. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. It's Saturday, so your Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in just a few hours. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.